بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين The following verse it's verse 39 of Surah Al Naba, in which Allah Azza wa Jal says, That is the true certain day. So he who wills may take to his Lord a way of return. If you ponder upon this verse, you feel as if it is a loud scream in the middle of a dark night, trying to wake up those who are asleep, those who look or act as if they are drunk, unaware Heedless of that day. That is the true certain day. There is no doubt about that day. There is no doubt about the advent of that day. It is the ultimate truth and ultimate certainty. It will. But when? That is the unknown factor. That is the unknown point. Because it is of the unseen that Allah Azza wa Jal did not disclose to anyone. And that is unknown except to Him, the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one thing we know for certain is that this day will start for me and you with our death. The journey towards that day starts with the ending point of this journey, of the journey of this life. The ending point of that is the initiating point of the, of the later. Of the hereafter. So that is the moment we need to be working for. That is the moment we need to be preparing for. The moment of death. Because it is also a moment of certainty and truth. It will take place. Undoubtedly. In this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal is responding to the kuffar who were uncertain, who were questioning in the beginning of the surah. What is this? What did Muhammad come with? What is resurrection? Will we be resurrected? Can someone resurrect us after we become bone? Allah Azza wa Jal is replying is responding strongly and aggressively. Yes, indeed, certainly, verily, you will be resurrected. That is the day of the truth. That is a certain day. So there is no space for doubt. So rest assured, you will meet it. Rest assured, you will face it. Rest assured, you will live it. Rest assured, you will see the consequence in it of what you did in this life.
Allah then says, so he who wills may take to his Lord a way of return. And let me just comment on the way, on the, uh, let me comment on the word, wills. We are given the free will to act. And this is a point of confusion to many people. Some people say, Allah decreed everything. So, why should we work? Why should we exert an effort? Yes, Allah Azza wa Jal did decree everything. And everything is recorded in a preserved record. al al mahfuz but he also, in the Quran, told us that he gave us the free will to decide which path we want to take. He gave us all the tools, all the means by which we can dis differentiate and distinguish between the truth and falsehood. The path that will lead us to the pleasure of Allah and the path that will lead us to destruction and hellfire. He gave us eyes with which we see. We can see the signs and the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And for our time we can read. He gave us the hearing sense with which we can hear the caller of Allah Azza wa Jal. He gave us the mind, the heart to ponder with and reflect and think. And he sent messengers and prophets and he sent and he re revealed books. So, evidence has been established against mankind and jinn. So, no one has an excuse of not knowing Allah made us aware of what is good, what is bad, what is evil, what is righteous, and then gave us the choice to decide where to set our foot on which of the two paths. Did you ever, and this is a, an example I usually give to brothers who ask me this question. I said, did you ever see someone who's a smoker did you ever see shaitan walk up to him, get a cigarette, pack a cigarette, pulls a cigarette out, stuff it in his mouth, lights it for him, and say, smoke? He does it willingly. Did you ever see someone or hear of someone who tried to wake up for fajr, but could not make it for salah? And when you asked him, he said, well, wallahi, I tried to get up, but shaitan came and Still held me down to the bed. I, I couldn't make it until Salah was finished. No. No one is forcing anyone to do anything. Shaitan whispers, but does not force. He has no ability to enforce what he whispers. But it is us who give up and give in. It is us who surrender and weaken. So, the word will here is can be confusing to some people one other point that's worth mentioning is that the will is connected to the will of Allah azza wa jal our will because Allah azza wa jal had decreed everything predestined everything prior to creation right so no one would say alas i'm i'm going to be a guided person from the people of Jannah from now on. Yes, you can try. But when the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, when your will coincides with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, then you will be enabled to do that. Now, the, the second word that's worth uh, addressing is the or term take a 
way to his Lord, a way of return. Take. Taking here is not just simple taking. No. It is referring to holding on strong, firmly to the path of Allah. It's not just walking. No, no, no. You have to strive and exert a lot of effort. You have to sacrifice a lot. And hold on strong to that path for you to be able or be enabled by Allah to maintain yourself upon that path that eventually leads you to the pleasure of Allah. The last verse of the surah, verse 40, Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّا أَنذَرْنَاكُمْ عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا يَوْمَ يَنظُرُ الْمَرْءُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهُ وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا Indeed, we have warned you of a near punishment on the day when a man will observe what his hands have put forth. And the disbeliever will say, Oh, I wish that I were dust. Again, Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing the disbelievers who denied resurrection who denied accountability, saying, We, it is us who warned you, who threatened you. And it was not Muhammad's words, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was not something from him. He was but a messenger conveying what we sent him with. It is us who sent him. It is us who threatened it is us who warned you, the advent of this day. Who warned you, the punishment of that day. Allah Azza wa Jal says, عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا A near punishment. One may question saying, if the Day when people will be waiting for accountability to start is 50,000 years. And we don't know how long is this world going to last. How can it be near? Well, it is near because, again, it starts with our death. And that is extremely near. Another thing, another thing the scholars said with regards to the word near, they said everything that is known and confirmed to happen is near regardless how far it is. Because eventually it will happen. Eventually one will see it. Eventually one will have to live it and live through it. So regardless of how far it is, since it starts with our death, and since it is confirmed, then it is something that is absolutely near and close. Allah Azza wa Jal says in verses 6 and 7 of Surah Al-Ma'arij, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا Indeed, they, meaning the disbelievers, see it as distant. And we see it as near. Again, coinciding the same word that is used in Verse 40 of Surah Al-Nabah. Let us conclude here. 
and we will resume with this verse in the following session insha'Allah subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu